Hi, this is Gary with MacMouse Now. On today's episode, let's look at different audio formats used by iTunes. Now, if you use iTunes to manage your music collection, you may want to know more about the different audio file formats that iTunes uses. So in iTunes, you have the choice between five different audio formats, and these are used when importing a CD or converting music from one format to the other. These are the formats you can convert to. But it may be useful to start talking about a format that's not listed there. It's a format called Redbook, and the Redbook format is used by CDs, audio CDs, and it's kind of been the standard for music since about 1980. Now, Redbook uses something called Linear PCM, which is a particular method of pulse code modulation which represents an audio waveform as a sequence of amplitude values recorded at a sequence of times. So it kind of looks like this if you take a look at it as a visual representation and you're probably familiar with this as an audio waveform. And this is what's used on CDs and it's basically where you start if you're importing music from a CD. So Mac started handling audio early. In 1988 Apple came out with the audio interchange file format or AIFF and this is very similar to Redbook. It uses linear PCM to represent a audio waveform as a file. So it's a relatively lossless conversion from your CDs to AIFF format even though it's technically not exactly the same format. And the file format itself isn't compressed at all. So all the audio is laid out and it could be relatively large. It could be approximately 10 megabytes per minute of music. And the format used today as AIFF is a slight variation on the original format but it's essentially the same. So in 1991 Microsoft and IBM came out with their own audio file format called the WAV format. Waveform Audio File Format, abbreviated WAV, and today both Macs and Windows computers can play AIFF and WAV files, so it really doesn't matter which format they're in. They're both lossless file formats that are not compressed. Now in the early 90s people got interested in compressing audio files so it could be more reasonable to send them over the early internet. And the MPEG-1 Audio Layer 3 format, otherwise known as MP3, was born and this allowed you to compress audio into a fraction of the size of the AIFF or WAV files and make it easy to send over the internet. Now you sacrifice some quality but you gain portability. So with the MP3 format we had the beginnings of the music industry moving to the internet as people were exchanging MP3 files all over the place legitimately and illegally and this led to all the online music stores that we have today. But before that happened, we had some new file formats that have taken over from MP3. So in 1997, a standard was released, the AAC standard, which was developed by Apple and a whole bunch of other companies. And this has slightly better compression and better quality than MP3. It stands for Advanced Audio Coding. And it's used now as the default in iTunes. And it's in fact also used as the default in a ton of other devices. But there's also the interest in having a lossless file format, one that is actually not losing any quality but still compresses the music. And Apple came out with the Apple lossless format and this format actually compresses the size of the files by about 50% but it doesn't lose any quality at all. So you can use Apple lossless to record things in the same quality level you would get with AIFF or WAV but save some file space. Apple Lossless is also very easy to decode, so low power small devices like the iPod can easily decode it and produce audio without using too much processor power and thus without using too much battery life. So when choosing a file format to store your entire music library, you first want to look and see if you want to do it lossless. Now AIFF and WAVE have the advantage that they've been around longer and thus they may play back on some devices that Apple Lossless does not but Apple Lossless will save you a lot of file space. Now between MP3 and AAC you have two good compression algorithms. AAC is better quality and better compression but there's some devices, for instance a lot of car stereos, that still don't support AAC. But AAC is being supported by more and more devices and just about anything new that comes out is going to support that since it is the standard. So my advice is that if you're an extreme audiophile then you probably want to use Apple Lossless to store all your music and then convert it as needed to MP3 or AAC to put it on to various devices. AAC if you're going to put it onto an iPod because the Apple Lossless format will probably take up too much space for you to fit enough of your music onto your iPod or iPhone. 
Now for everyone else, probably storing your files in AAC format is the best idea unless you have a specific device, like say your car stereo that only supports MP3 files. In that case you may want to use high quality MP3s instead. Hope you found this look at iTunes file formats useful. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.